Hi, this is Steve Adubato. Thank you so much for joining us remotely once again. We are honored to be joined. Last time he was with us in the studio at NJTV. Now he's with us remotely. Brandon McCoy, President, New Jersey Policy Perspective. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you, Steve. How's everything? Doing all right. Let folks know as we put up the website for Policy Perspective what the organization's all about and why you matter now more than ever. Yeah, we're a think tank, the think and do tank that does research on a variety of public policy issues affecting the state of New Jersey, uh, especially tax and budget policy, immigration, healthcare, economic security. Uh, and we, we really pay attention to uh, the ways in which those policies impact everyday people in our state and really uh, value equity and to make sure that uh, folks who are facing the most challenges or folks who have been historically discriminated against uh, are, are being centered uh, in every policy conversation in the state. Along those lines, Brandon, our series um, confronting racism, there's so many facets to it, but you mentioned so many different issues. So in that context, the, the, the advent of COVID-19, as we're taping this on the 13th of July, it'll be seen later, the impact of COVID-19 on the people that you and your organization are most concerned about, that we must be all concerned about, those who are frankly the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really disproportionate and really damaging impact, um, but it's made worse by the inequities that have existed in our state and in our country going back for decades, if not centuries, right? Um, uh, a lack of, uh, or rather a significant disparity in access to healthcare, a disparity in income, disparity in home ownership, uh, disparity when it comes to access to critical resources that prevent people from falling into poverty, you know, education, you could go down the line, no matter what you look at, uh, people of color, communities of color and low income uh, individuals are, you know, are really at the bottom of the ladder when you look at those metrics. And so you have something like uh, the coronavirus hit and it's gonna have the worst impact and have the most damaging effect on folks who don't really have a lot of um, ways to weather such crazy storms, right? They don't have a lot of opportunity to uh, have more resiliency in their lives because they don't have a lot of savings, they don't have um, access to high quality healthcare or affordable healthcare, uh, and that just really creates a poor situation where now as we're going through the effects of this pandemic and the accompanying economic recession that is getting worse over time, uh, you're, you're having sort of a split in who's experiencing uh, the negative impacts of these phenomena the worst. You're having folks who are in the middle class and above you know, they're feeling it, but they're not really hurting tremendously. And then folks who are in the lower middle class and below are really getting hurt badly, losing their jobs, you know, losing opportunities to earn an income, losing, losing opportunities to put food on the table. And it's really concerning how long this is going to last. You know, Brennan, you and your colleagues, and it's not the first time, the last time you were with us in the studio called for it, you called for it again with policy perspective. You're calling for an increase in the millionaire's tax. You're yeah. calling for increasing taxes at this time with these significant economic challenges across the board with people losing their jobs with businesses folding you're calling for an increase in the millionaires tax make that case yeah well uh, increase on you know, tax on those who earn a million dollars or more i should have clarified that i'm sorry right so if you're if you're earning a million dollars or more still in this economy you're doing pretty well, right? Like even after all the losses that people have had, after all the um, all the, the hits that the economy has taken, if you're still earning over a million dollars annually, you're doing exceedingly well. And actually a lot of our research shows and research from national organizations shows that the wealthy have actually continued to get richer uh, over the first half of 2020. They haven't really taken the hit like everybody else has. And so Really what we're pushing for here is just, New Jersey needs to have a tax code across the board, whether it's income, wealth, whatever you know, sort of um, sector you wanna look at that prioritizes equity and prioritizes uh, fairness. And right now in New Jersey, if you earn $80,000 a year, you pay the same income tax rate as somebody who earns half a million. That's not fair. You know, if you earn $520,000 a year, let's say, you pay the same tax rate as somebody who earns four million that's not fair and there's more tax brackets on new jersey's income tax uh code under seventy five thousand than there are over seventy five thousand. so what we're merely saying is let's listen let's recognize disparities in wealth let's recognize that there's a huge difference between you know eighty thousand dollars and half a million dollars and also as we think about how do we recover from this crisis we know 
historically, looking at states that did well coming out of the Great Recession, they raised revenue in an equitable and progressive manner early on. New Jersey, we know, did not take that tact. And we had one of the slowest, longest, most painful recoveries from the Great Recession of any state. So let's not make that mistake again. Let's raise revenue. And that way we can afford to provide relief to families, workers, and businesses who are facing tough times right now. But if we don't do that, we're just going to have to borrow money. And, and we, I'm sure we'll get to that at some point. Or we're going to be stuck waiting on the federal government to send relief. And, you know, honestly, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to take that gamble. I don't see that coming anytime soon. You know, I asked this in the studio last time. I'm going to do it again. Aren't you concerned? Shouldn't we be concerned about those who are earning half a million dollars, a million dollars more? If, in fact, their taxes are raised, they say, look, I'm out. I'm out of here. And John Bramnick, the Assembly Republican leader, has said it. Others have said it. Business leaders we've talked to have said it. You tax those folks enough, the folks who pay the most in taxes are out of here. We lose them. We lose their revenue. You say? I say the data doesn't show that. You know, we have added high wealth individuals and high income individuals on a consistent clip over the past 30 years. Uh, you go back to 1994, 1995, uh, New Jersey had about 6,000, I'm sorry, about 10,000 high income households, people who earned over $500,000. As of 2017, we had over 65,000 high income households. That's a six fold increase. And we, we increased taxes a couple of times over that period. The only time that that number dropped was during a recession, which makes a lot of sense. But people aren't responding to tax increases. The idea that I'm gonna pick up and move my entire life because of an extra two cents on every dollar I make over a million dollars is a little bit nuts. And I would also say that the reason people will leave New Jersey is because they cannot rely on our assets. They know that they cannot rely on MJ Transit to get into Manhattan in 45 minutes. They can't rely on the idea that their kid can go to Rutgers and get a high quality education for an affordable rate. They can't rely on the idea that uh, the environment that they live in is gonna be healthy because of all of our, all of our env environmental challenges. That's what's gonna get people to leave New Jersey. The idea that it's all, the end all and be all is always tax increases, it's just a myth that is per, per, uh, you know, perpetuated because people want to be able to be greedy and hold on to uh, dollars that they really made because they were in a state that provided them the assets to be able to do so. Well, I'll tell you what, as we wrap up this segment, uh, Brandon McCoy, president of New Jersey Policy Perspective, the debate, the argument, the contentious back and forth between Governor Murphy, who believes a lot of the things you just have said, you said, and some of the Republicans in the legislature who don't, and some more moderate leaning conservative Democrats like Senate President Steve Sweeney who don't believe it. We're going to see how that plays out. We'll continue not just to cover it, but to analyze it. And I promise you, Brandon McCoy, we'll continue to talk to you because your perspective is so important. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. All right. I'm Steve Adubato. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, RWJ Barnabas Health, New Jersey Board of Public Utilities, Clean Energy Program, the New Jersey Education Association, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, the Fidelco Group, Johnson & Johnson, Georgian Court University, and by NJM Insurance Group. Promotional support provided by Insider NJ and by New Jersey Globe. Hi, I'm Eric. You might see me as an ordinary person, but I've been living with a brain injury for nearly two years. One of my struggles is short-term memory loss. At Opportunity Project, I'm given hope and support and I've gained my commerce back through the job placement program. Despite my challenges, I have a reason to keep improving. Today, even though life has changed me, I believe that anything is possible. If you have a brain injury, you don't have to face your road to recovery alone.